Good morning, everyone. My name is Ben. I'm up here at Kind Heart Homestead in Patrick County, Virginia, here with my son, Cedar, and we're foraging. He loves wild blackberries, and we have fields of them. I just want to do a quick tour of some of the stuff we have. Right here is a wild grapevine. Let me know down in the comments if you know what these type of grapes are, if they're edible, when do you think they're going to be ripe? Walk down here over near our pond. Angie thinks these are black raspberries. They kind of get this haziness to them. And the new growth grows on a blue vine or a cane rather. And then I'll show you a close up of some of the actual wild blackberries. Berry boy. Come on. Behind me is one of the habitats, which I've designated by not mowing it for the past year. And my understanding of berries, at least these wild blackberries, is that the first year they don't produce fruit, but the second year, well, all of those little red dots you see are wild blackberries that haven't ripened yet. I'm gonna go in there with my big boots on, just so I don't get pricked too much and I'm going to pick as many of these blackberries as I can. We've been picking them for the past couple weeks, just randomly around. We might be able to get a handful on a good day, but it looks like there's at least a bucket's worth out here, accessible just in this one concentrated grove. I think for the future years, I'm going to keep this grove. Whether or not I keep the rest of the natural area, uh, we'll have to decide that later but at least this berry patch, I feel like we should let it spread, let it mature, and then uh, maybe we can even put some paths into more easily accessible the berry plants once they get tall enough to really keep track of. So stick around and let's see how many blackberries I get. So here is a walkthrough of our garden from about one month ago. On the left there, you can see the raised bed has lettuce and peas in it. The kale is pretty much done. On the right side, we have cucumbers, tomatoes, and squash. Hopefully the viney plants will climb up the trellis. But in the background there, you can see Angie did some row crops. We have a couple rows of okra and several rows of corn. But there's also beans and more squash plants interspersed in there to act as a polycrop companion planting uh, three sisters style. Well, we just got back from a vacation. Went down to South Carolina to visit my parents. When we came back, these squash plants were huge. And guess what's inside? Some fully developed zucchinis, check it out.
There's one. I'm not sure if you noticed, but our rows of corn were pretty densely packed. That's because Angie has not thinned the corn yet. Usually when a gardener thins plants, they're essentially just culling or rejecting the excess plants because they're too close together. That either means picking them out like a weed or chopping them down with some scissors or some other tool. In this case, Angie's determined to save the corn just because she loves sweet corn so much. So she's carefully placing these all in a small tray of water to keep the roots moist. Her goal is to successfully transplant these in the ground. I don't think people typically attempt this because corn tends to like its roots placed firmly once and then never moved, but it's worth a try. The alternative is just throwing these in the compost, and since we have the room, why not plant these? So this is a new grid of corn. You can see it's four rows. Because corn is wind pollinated, they like to be clustered like this. So the pollen can spread in every direction. So now it's just a matter of soaking the soil and then only time will tell if this strategy actually pays off. This is what our cucumbers look like today. And we just picked about five of these and maybe we can make some pickles or something out of them. We don't know. Let us know down in the comments what you like to do with your excess cucumbers. The next plant we can forage for is right here. These little white poofy flowers behind me are called Queen Anne's Lace. And there's a little saying that I learned to distinguish it from its similar looking counterpart, the poison hemlock. And the saying is Queen Anne has hairy legs. So when you look down at the stem, there's these little thorns, these little hairs. I'm not a plant expert by any means. Let me know down in the comments if you think that's safe to eat. My understanding is if you pull it up by the root, it's kind of like a very skinny carrot. I actually heard online someone say that they thought that might have been where we got carrots from before we selectively bred them to be nice and plump. So if you want me to pull one up and try it, just let me know. I'll give it a taste. I'm gonna take you over here to some of the other things that we have on the property. Decades ago, our neighbor planted these pear trees. Last year, we didn't get any of this food. There was something weird about the last frost being so late, and I guess it really stunted everything. But this year, there's thousands of pears in this tree. There's another one just over there. But right now I'm gonna take you over to the apple tree that I recently discovered. Way up here in the woods, beyond our field, beyond our pear trees, is this apple tree. I have no idea how it survives here. There's no sun. We're in the woods. There is this small opening where there's no trees growing, but I think that's because the surrounding trees are so mature that they really shade out this whole place. I don't even have to mow here because this grass doesn't even get enough sun to grow. But I'm looking forward to trying these apples and pears in the fall once they get ripe. We have nut trees all around. I think there's hickory nuts, maybe some sort of walnuts or pecans. I don't know, maybe you can help me identify this. These are all over the ground. So start a discussion down in the comments and I hope to see you here next time on Kind Heart Homestead. Bye. Come on cows, it's okay. Maria won't bother you.